the state of our youth is appalling, sorry, and sorrowful. Because our youth today, they are not thinking about hard work again. Everybody was looking for a shortcut to wealth. And we never realized that fingers are not equal. The shortcut to wealth, some of this problem started from home. But I will not blame home too much. I will blame the government. Mm. A lot of churches of the day preach prosperity. They didn't preach morals again. Mm. They didn't preach kingdom of heaven again. Mm, salvation. Salvation, they don't do that again. Because it's he who bring more money to the church that the church will recognize. Jesus. We have to be frank with ourselves. I'm a Christian. I remember a redeemed Christian church of God. But what is happening in churches of today, it is very, very, very bad. All the money churches have been collecting from people from this. All day, they did pay back. As of that time, I thought churches supposed to be buying food, mm. buying clothing, buying drinks for people that look who want to ameliorate your suffering yeah. during this period because the economy of the country is not good. Mm. You are not able to save money for this dry period. Yes, but rather, the church are even forcing the people in the church to contribute money and buy things for other people in the church. Mm. Where were the money that have been paid into the church? You leave my ancestral land. That I that my great 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 grandparents are here. Why don't he tell all of us to face the system and tell the system that what they are doing is wrong rather than running away? When you run away from your problem, your problem will follow you to wherever you are going. Mm. When you wait for your problem, your problem will run away from you. Mm. He's talking about plan B. Plan B for what? Well, it's another very wonderful, lovely day today in the city of Lagos, Nigeria, West Africa, as we meet another very important personality. He is a very wonderful man, a man of impeccable achievements, a security expert, and a comrade of the common struggle in Nigeria, someone who has also contributed to the body of security and everything that has to do with good governance. He is an ambassador of good governance and a leadership coach in his own right. I'm talking of Mr. Kolawoli Sheye Are. Uh, We're lucky to be with him today. It's been a long time we're trying to reach him, but today, by God's grace, on Asabi Africa, we're here to meet him, and we're going to be raising a lot of issues about the security situation in Nigeria, the Yoruba agitation, and uh, what it means to be a federation, and what it also means for us to be 
as one people or to be divided and all that. We are very privileged to be with you today, sir. We want to thank you for this humble uh, uh, ambience of yours. We want to thank you for your humility today. First and foremost, who is this wonderful man? We want to just know who is Mr. Kola Wale Sheye Are, sir. Yeah, I'm Kola Wale Olu Sheye Are. A Yoruba man from Abi Okuta. And I am a graduate of University of Lagos. I'm into security consultancy and building constructions. Married, blessed with kids. Married and blessed with kids. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so talking about, uh, let's just know where you started from. I mean, was it security first or building construction? How did you start as a young person? As a young person, I thank God I have a very good parents, disciplined. My father of blessed memory, Chief S.O. Olusha Yeare, is a building engineer that worked with several oh, construction companies. He was the, one of the earliest engineers in Nigerian history. And my mom, too, a very virtuous woman, a woman that I pray if I come to this world again, I should come through her vessel. Mm. Her name is Dineta Lake, Olusha Yare. So they both instill discipline in with their children mm. and oh, the essence of hard work. Mm. I started as a building technologist. It was while I was doing that that I pulled resources together and sent myself to university. It was at university that I was first, I first come in contact with people that are agitating for good governance. Although I've been following issues in Nigeria before, because I believe in an egalitarian society, which you will call Akparuko Gajukolo. Akparuko Gajukolo, Etuba Gurebi. Etuba Gurebi. And for you to have that, if we have level playing ground, the Anybody that wants to excel will excel through his or her own ability and capacity because we are not all blessed with equal capacity. We are blessed with diverse capacity and ability. But if there is a level playing ground, nobody in the society will be crying that they are hungry or they lack the basic amenities of life. A Yoruba man and the black man generally, we only ask for a few things from our government because we are hardworking. What we ask for is affordable food, where you can live, and you get a job that can provide you with all those things. Mm. That is what we as black men believe in. Mm. Now, 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 let me take you back. Uh, growing up, sir, looking at Nigeria of your time, and Nigeria of this very moment, what do you think is missing right now? If, if, you, if you find yourself in your house at the time, you watch the television, you listen to the radio, you're in the bathroom uh, bathing and all that, what do you really say to yourself that, oh, I wish that we can get back to this time? What do you think we are missing right now in Nigeria? Good leadership. Mm. Responsible leadership. Mm. People that are operating, they are servants of the people, mm. not leaders of the people. People that are servants. Mm. Okay, leaders should be servants. Leaders should be servants. Leaders should be servants. People that want to lead, you should first be a servant to the people. It was being a servant to the people that will be able to know what they lack, what they need, that you can work on and be a good leader. But our problem is bad leadership. Even if we are talking about the military era that some people come into governance illegally, Mm. Yeah. But so far that they are ruling us and they are good people. We've seen several countries all over the world during the era of coup making all over the world, yeah. especially in the South American, African and Asian society. Some of them are good people. They lead their people right. Mm. The only thing here is greed, self-centeredness and mm. lackadaisical approach. That's like a way to leadership. To leadership so yes. you, you are saying that in the days of the military, we even had military men who are able to give good governance to their people, who are able to uh, run the society the way it's supposed to be run. But right now, you appear that the democracy that we crave for is almost like a bondage. Actually, I will agree with you. Democracy is supposed to be government of the people for the people, by the people, as stated by Abraham Lincoln. But unfortunately, 
in our own case, democracy is for the leaders. One rule for the leader, another rule for the followers. That is where we are having the whole problem. Yeah. Since 1999, that we we'll get back to civilian rule. Yeah. I can say that I've not seen a leader that really excel himself in taking care of the masses, in thinking from the perspective of the masses, so that the masses should be able to enjoy themselves in a reasonable society. If, if I will take you on that side, a lot of people look at it today and they said maybe since 1999 we, went back to the, we came back to democracy that maybe General Basanjo was a bit okay. People are looking at it and say, okay, General Barry is trying, but it appears that there's a lot of confusion in town. But can we look at between General Basanjo that came in at that time, uh, Malam Yadwa, uh, President Gulag Jonathan, and the president we now have, who will you give a bit of kudos among them? Do you think somebody should learn from another person, or do you think all of them are in the same kid? I'll give kudos to Yaradra. Why, sir? Because the few time that he spent in leading the people of Nigeria, he did wonderfully well. He listened to the people. He made the people's problem his problem. Maybe because he didn't have the mentality of the military. But apart from that, we have some military people that are very, very, very good people. Mm. I've come in contact with some of them. That I see that the way they think mm. is even better than the way the supposed politicians are thinking. Okay, in terms of thinking capability? Thinking capability mm. and the ability to do things. Mm. Our military, look at when we fought civil war, it's only done by our military. Yeah. Even the Biafra side then, they secure the services of some mercenaries, but our military still defeat them. The first era of people that were trained in Sandos, yeah. they were trained in India, they were trained in Pakistan. They get the grabs of it until we come into quota system of military leadership that brought everything down, that make everything, it negates everything. Quota system is a cost. Oh, you mean the quota system they talk about? Yeah, quota system is a cost to any society. Mm. Mm. You should be able to do things with your ability, mm. not by where you come from mm. or what you are doing. Mm. Mm. It is a killer blow to Nigerian existence. It, that means quota system. Yeah. But but it appears that nobody is listening because what you said now, General Samoma also wrote about it in his book before he passed away last year. He's a former Minister of Science and Technology has continued to abuse it. So what do you think quota system is doing that has really got us to this level? He did a lot. Part of it, me, I was... I passed through class 1 to class 5 in secondary school. Some of us that cannot continue, when we go to class three, they handed it there by getting a 75 that pushed them to teacher training college, that pushed them to college of education. Tell me today, people are not ready to go to college of education again. People are not ready to go to teacher training college again. That is where the foundation of the children's pupils from primary school get worsened before they go to secondary school. The first school of everybody is the family. The first school of every human being is family. Mm. The second school is a, oh, is a conventional school set up by the system. But the first school of the family too now have been eroded. The conventional school, there is no good beginning again. Mm. And what caused all this problem is that some people find out that when they put effort, natural effort, they, see not, they didn't still meet up with people that got there basically because of where they come from. Mm. Quota system. On quota system. It's appalling. When people are writing exams for Unity School in Nigeria, we are giving some areas that their cut-off mark is 78, and some places six marks. That is the foundational error of our education and everything we are doing. Mm. That's crazy, honestly. Uh, uh, let, let me even take you back, because you just touched about the family. You said the first school of every young person is a family, then the second one is a conventional school. I'm, I'm sure that the third one is going to be the church, but let's go back to the family. When you look at the young people today, as an elder statesman, as a father, you look at people, a paper this morning, okay, now look at it. This paper said, gambling, now youth new addiction. You can see this is a cover story. Uh, we, we see young people that are now Lodo, Lodo addicts, Google addicts, 
uh, Igbo addicts, and a lot of things going on in the street. Even if there's a little traffic problem now, you see some boys, they just create a barrier and start collecting money from people. It's happening everywhere. When you look at the young people of today, what do you think that the government or the society has missed in terms of raising leaders? Because they are the leaders of tomorrow. A lot of them are into Yahoo now. So what pains you most about the state of our youth in Nigeria today so as a father and as an elder state man? Oh, the state of our youth is appalling, sorry, and sorrowful. Because our youth today, they are not thinking about hard work again. Everybody was looking for a shortcut to wealth. And we never realized that fingers are not equal. The shortcut to wealth, some of this problem started from home. But I will not blame home too much. I will blame the government. Why, sir? Do you blame the government? The reason I blame the government is that in every society, the first thing in every society is that government will make a reasonable social order. Government will make a reasonable social order. When there is no reasonable social order... Okay, social order. Yes. When there is no reasonable social order, there is poverty. Poverty of the stomach. Poverty of the stomach will bring poverty of the mind. And poverty of the mind will make parents lose control of their kids. Because a child that went around to do fraud, bring money to a parent that the society is not, that, that, that the system is not taken care of. I did my Gregor theory in economics, Gregor theory of X, Y, and Z. Yes. All of us were working because of our stomach, not because of the clothes we want to put on or because of the motor we want to buy. Hmm. We are working because of our stomach. Yoruba ni tebi bati ko ni nushe, abushe bushe. But when the parents are hungry, the society is not taking care of them, the social order is downturning. People will go into gangsterism and vices that is against natural order. Hmm. Yes, sir, you are talking about the, the, the family value, the, the base family value, and the you know the role of society. That society is have the moderation is bad. They've not been able to moderate the economic uh, uh, the ba- economic balance system is not too balanced, so that the parents are not in good condition to even monitor their children and that the children because the parents suffer it the children have to just survive so what does that say about leaders of tomorrow that that is catastrophe mm. it's catastrophic for leaders of tomorrow mm. because anybody that do not go through a reasonable tutelage mm. can never be a good leader mm. somebody that got his wealth via fraud cannot teach others in future that hard work will get your wealth through hard work. Mm. It's what you get that you can transfer. It's what you get that you can taught other people. What you don't get you cannot teach people. Mm. We are heading towards Golgotha. Golgotha? Yeah. Mm. We are heading towards Golgotha. Social Golgotha? Yes, social Golgotha. Whereby it's happening now already. If you see the number of people that enter university in the early 2000s, majority of them enter university not through merit, but through arrangement. And they are the workforce of every, of every area of our economy now. That is why you are seeing everything falling. All the cars are falling down. Because they don't really face education when they are in school. They pay to get the degree. Special centers. Special centers. The advent of the special centers. The advent of people that are arrange, they arrange exam for them by parents. And it all brought back to this quota system we are talking about. Because some people find out that with all the effort they are giving, some are just getting it free. So they too, they want to cut corners. And is the societal heal. And it's killing us today. See all the area of our economy. Fraudulent, unserious, irresponsible because of inordinate ambition of people to get rich quick. Can you imagine? That, 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 that's, that's quite unfortunate. That's unfortunate. You know, um, let me even go back to the issue of these children because what you just said now is really painful. You know, you live in a neighborhood now that you see a lot of young people 
who drive flashy cars and you ask their age their age is 18 19 20 and you see them buying cars of 10 million cars worth 15 million and you see them train parties and all that does this say something to you about today's parenthood because coming from your own background whereby life was okay in your own day your ch your parents were very uh, strict they, they kenned you they, 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 they were so strict with you they made sure you came out and you came up as a a, a, a total adult so what does it say to you when you see young people that are driving flashy cars throwing parties and doing all sort of things in a hotel hmm. if you look at it very well that's how that's why they die young hmm. very young without achieving anything they achieved nothing they thought they achieved something they achieved nothing Life has its own circle. Hmm. But the circle of life whereby we call something a binga, a for offer. A binga. A binga. Hmm. A for offer. Hmm. So that is what some of them are doing. And it's killing them. Sadly, even today, recently now in the social media, I'm not sure if you are familiar with it, you now see young people bathing on bridges in public places. In fact, a video was sent to me the voice day about how these people are now bathing publicly. Some are even bathing on the burial ground. Young people, sir. <laughs> it's quite shaking, sir. Uh, it, 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 like I said earlier, that is appalling. Mm. And everything brought back to wrong social holder. Mm. How do we find ourselves here today? The reason we find ourselves here today is because of bad leadership like where we started from. Hmm. Bad leadership. A leadership that is not taking care of the followership. Hmm. The society is in a mess. The society is going down into the abyss of nothingness. Hmm. That is why everybody are trying shortcut. Shortcut to wealth, shortcut to education, even shortcut to living. So we, we, we still bob back to our government. Hmm. If they make a share look we share. Like in Ugu State. Yes. A share look we share because you have to work before you become somebody. If they make it the background of whatever we are doing, without them stealing us dry, without them turning public coffer into their personal pocket. Hmm. We need to find ourselves here. Hmm. Wow. And even as the way all those guys are doing all those things, they tell they will tell you that they have freedom. Freedom is curtailed at some certain level if it's infringing on other people's liberty. Hmm. How do you come to the main road where you started bathing and I'm driving, you don't want my car to pass? Hmm. You are not that is no more freedom. I think government is supposed to do something about it. Can you call that madness, sir? More than madness. Because he says no more freedom when somebody is baffing with red cloths. Uh, I mean, the road the blocking road, me. Blocking and baffing. I have already paid roadworthiness to government mm. before I could take my vehicle out. Mm. And you are not telling me that that person has freedom to do whatever it likes. No, that is not freedom. It's impinging, impinging on my own liberty. Mm. Liberty of moving for what I paid government for. So, so, so looking at it now, do you, because you said the first school is the parents and the second school is uh, professional, primary, professional school. primary and secondary school, uh, then what is the role of the third school? That's the church. I mean, in those days when we are in church, we are in the Sunday school, we are even afraid because we cannot do anything. Most of the teachings I had from my CAC from the Sunday school, that's why it's still helping me now. I cannot even tattoo my hand. I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, dry my head or, 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 or you do uh, dread my hair or, or or color it or do also do sort of So, what is the role of the church now? Is the church also chasing money, sir? The churches of today, they only preach prosperity. Prosperity, sir. Prosperity, I mean, mm. a lot of churches of the day preach prosperity. They didn't preach morals again. Hmm. They didn't preach kingdom of heaven again. No salvation. Salvation, they don't do that again. Because it's he who bring more money to the church that the church will recognize. Jesus. We have to be frank with ourselves. I'm a Christian and a member of Redeemed Christian Church of God. But what is happening in churches of today, it is very, very, very bad. Hmm. Even look at the last, uh, what do we call it? The last uh, uh, COVID period. Yes, the COVID period. They told everybody to be at home. All the money churches have been collecting from people from this holiday, they did pay back. As of that time, I thought churches are supposed to be buying food, mm. buying clothing, 
buying drinks for people that look who want to ameliorate your suffering yeah. during this period because the economy of the country is not good. Mm -hmm. You are not able to save money for this dry period. Yes, but rather, the church are even forcing the people in the church to contribute money and buy things for other people in the church. Where were the money that have been paid into the church? In tithes, in offerings, in special donation, in sacrificial givings, or everything like that. So if they make money, the bedrock of the churches today, not only Christian, Muslims do too, but theirs is not as loud as, loud as the Christians. The Christian world in Nigeria, they don't help matters. We need to reform. A reform. We need a reform. So, so because during the corona, I think God made it a test because we also witnessed it. People like Pastor Sam, uh, Pastor Matthew Ashimolo, I think so. He was coming out to beg God that please pay into our online portal or something like that. That please pay. Oh, that you, even if you're at home, just pay your tithe, pay your offering. Then even Baba Oyedi put that world. Some some of us even respect was even putting online portal. That just put the money, no matter what happened. Even if you are sitting in the toilet or in the bathroom, just pay this money. So as a Christian, how does it, what, what, what does it do to you psychologically? Because in America, I saw churches where they were sharing hampers with food, with everything inside. People drove to the church and they were taking their hampers and some were even taken to the home of those people by pastors. And today in America, if you go to America, you go to a church, even after the church, they tell you, have your coffee and your snacks and all that. But in Nigeria, it appears that it's another thing. It's just Mua, Mua. We are building cathedral. We are building new office. We are building school. Yet the school, the children of the poor in the church cannot attend. So how did that Corona era affected you, sir, as a Christian, sir? As a Christian, hmm. it puts shames into my face. I, it is a shame for what some churches did then. It even makes some people to check their faith in churches again. Hmm. And like what we've known from my leftist leaning Good. position in the university, hmm. they told us religion is the op opium of the poor. <laughs> <laughs> the opium of the poor indeed. Yeah. <laughs> what the opium, what the poor is backing upon. Yeah, 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 because they always preach hope, 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 hope. No reality. Yeah, yeah. Hope, everlasting hope. Everlasting hope. <laughs> it's the opium of the poor. They are a lot of them are they are they are, they are working on the um, how do I put it? The psych the, the, on the psych and the how do how do I put it? Vulnerability. Not vulnerability per se. I will, I will say they are playing on their intelligence mm. because of the level of poverty in the land. It's because of the level of poverty in the land. Yeah. Somebody told me that when you live in Europe or America or one of these developed countries, mm. your problem is solve 50%. Mm. Immediately you get there. The other 50, you take it to God. Mm. Because those people, they are fear God. That is why they make the society reasonable for everybody to live in. What they're supposed to do in the society, good road, good education, affordable housing, affordable transportation, they make all available. Yeah. Because they know that that is what God said that they should do for the people that they are ruling. So the remaining 50% will take it to God. But here, yeah, the, the leaders of society are not doing that. And even they are being bagged in their, in their evil ways by the leader of the, the religious leader. Look at what Gumi is doing recently. How cool is a cool sane human being? told government that they should go to central bank, take money and paid bandits and paid kidnappers. The money, the, the money that people pay through their tax, commonwealth, and you told the government that your own advice is that they should go to central bank and take 100 million and give it to kidnappers, people that kidnap other people that are going in on their own way, that they are doing what they're supposed to do. That is a big shame, sir. He called himself a religious scholar. And he called himself a religious leader. He's shameless. He's shameless and he's not following the tenet of what God said we should be doing. Even as, as, even as Christian, as Muslim. As because, Christian, as Muslim. Yeah. Immediately you encourage people that are doing evil, that they should be rewarded. You are not serving God. You are serving them all. 
Pastor, let, 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 let's even go back to the, the issue of choice because I'm very interested in this moral, uh, the moral, uh, uh, what can I call it, uh, moral projects because the youth are just losing it every day. 50 years ago, in your own days, when you were growing up, the missionaries came from abroad and they had missionary school, they had CMS, uh, grammar schools and all those kind of schools and most of them were for nothing. Your education were not, there was no too much money attached. I mean, some of you even got free education from those missionary schools. But today, we have our own missionaries. We have our own pastors, our Jews, our daddy bishop, daddy this and that. They have schools and the schools, the children of you and I, Ordinary people, okay, you are even rich, but the children of the average people in the church, ordinary people, can, <laughs> they, they cannot go there, sir. So how does it, what does it tell you? Because the source of the church, the source of those schools is free offering, through tithe, through offering, through uh, donations and all that. But it appears that they are telling us that the education has to be, you, you have to sell your ass to get a education of your children. Some people even want to pay, they have to eat garlic to raise the children school fees. So what does it say to you about Christianity and social order? Hmm. Religion, especially Christianity, are not being practiced the way we met it from our parents again. I... The, the advent of the Pentecostal churches yes, sir. caused a lot of chaos. I agree. I agree. It caused a lot of chaos in our psychology. It caused a lot of chaos in the way we bring up our children. It caused a lot of chaos in the way we relate with God. Sure. I remember during when we were young, when we go to all these Orthodox churches, yeah. Baptist, Catholic, African church or Anglican church, they are schools. They are mission schools. They didn't collect money. They even give to you to go back and give to your parents. Minister. Yes, I went to a I went to a Muslim primary school. A Muslim primary school. I went to a Muslim primary school. Like a din. Yes, I went I first went to uh, Amadea. It was Amadea when I got there in primary school. It's beside Guinness there. Yeah. Yeah. Guinness Agegedia. Yeah. It's beside Guinness. Later it was changed to Awaru Islam. We were never bothered. Yeah. And we got everything reasonably well. Okay. The mosque we come, take care of our classes that are bad. These churches they don't even do social oh, uh, responsibility. Responsibility. Uh, that, CRS. Yes, yeah, CRS. Yeah. They don't do that. Rather, they pump all the money to their churches, to their schools, and tell you to come and pay through your nose. It is not right. We have to face it. It's part of the degeneration of our society because the government even give them a free hand to do whatever they like. I still take everything back to the cover of the government. Because yeah, the people in government are religious hypocrites. They don't want to say the truth to the churches because the churches didn't tell them to the truth. Yeah. Mm. It's vice versa. Mm. They are helping each others out in exploitation of the ordinary masses. Mm. Let us leave that one for there. Let's go to another area. In fact, if I, if I, I'm, I'm very, you know, because it, these are issues that people want to, you know, a lot of people are talking about it and people like you cannot meet you without raising those issues, you know. But generally now, looking at Nigeria now, let's go back to Nigeria. How do you feel with the present state of the nation now? You have seen it all. You're a, you're a security expert, you're a businessman, you're a father. Sleeping in your house, how do you feel about the situation of Nigeria? Because a pastor, is it, last week, is a pastor Adi Farasi said we should have a plan B. Mm -hmm. And everybody is now starting to look out for plan B. There's some, she even start planning to run to Canada. A lot of young people are going to Canada. And the governor of Ikiti, the other day said you should not go to Canada. Even though we heard that his own son is in Canada. But sir, how do you feel about Nigeria as an elder statement? Let me first answer from the perspective of Pastor Adi Farasi. Pastor Adi Farasi is talking from that prism because of the fact that he's part and parcel of the problem. I can say it to his face if I see him. Because if you are talking about plan B, that people should have plan B. Plan B what? I should leave my, I should leave my land. I should run away to Canada. I should leave my ancestral land that, I, that my great-great-great-grandparents are here. Why don't he tell all of us to face the system and tell the system that what they are doing is wrong rather than running away? When you run away from your problem, your problem will follow you to wherever you are going. Hmm. When you wait for your problem, your problem will run away from you. Hmm. He's talking about plan B. Plan B for what? Plan B to run away from our land? 
I think he said we should run to Canada. We should start having other ideas. Run to Canada. People there, so man. Canada should come and carry every hundred million of us down to Canada, so that Canadians will now come back here. They will leave their country for you to come back here. Does that make any sense to him too? That is what I'm saying. When you don't relate with your society, you not know what is happening in your society. Majority of them read all these things on social media. Ask them, when last did Pastor Adifara say himself, walk through the street of Lagos, walk through the street of Ibadan, walk through the street of Akure, or Kaduna, or Enugu, or Abia? Has he ever, ever been to a real market before? Maybe to go and buy something, sir? Yes. Why you don't move among people, you don't know the problem of those people. You mean a whole pastor say Prasin go to Shudi or Ari Ariat? Who buy? is a whole pastor Adi Farasin? Mm. Pastor Adi Farasin, he, he said he's a, he, he's a worker in the vineyard of God. Yeah. If you're a worker in the vineyard of God, yeah. they say we should go like what we used to do in Redeem. Yes, sir. Let's go and fishing. He too should go to Shudi and go and fish for members. Not that they'll be doing it on social media. Social media, you can hide mm. behind it. To say whatever you want to say. Yeah. I see there is one pastor hmm. that I admire what he's doing. I can't recollect his name again. Uh, Tony Rappu. Uh, Tony Rappu. That is going to take. To, to, I so much admire what that. He's taking out the drunkards and the drug addicts. Yes. 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 For me, then. it's only that I cannot leave my church to go to his church. But I admire that man a lot. Hmm. He go to the basics to see what is happening to the people and see what he has been doing to all those people. Hmm. Those people that he has been saving, they too they have been saving others of their hikes. Not that somebody that will tell us that, oh, where do you want me to carry my children to? If I carry my children, I should carry my cousins too. I should take my nephew and my nieces too to Canada. Maybe you think we should run away, sir. I should just take everything. I should just take everything and run away. Just run away for plan B, sir. And, and leave my land. Where God endowed us, where God put us in from time, from time in memory. It's quite unfortunate, sir. I don't know where the town that it comes from. I don't know. Is it Paul Ladifar? I don't know where it's really for. Is it from? Is it on those state or something? But he's a Yoruba man, sir. So what does that say about Moluabi, sir? Ko wo Moluabi o. Lati so be ki on sakun le babe. Ko wo Moluabi ra ko soro Moluabi. When they have their own problem in Canada, they wait and face it. That is why Canada is how it is today. I the so the problem with some of us. Let me tell you, my brother, is that we read. We read for profession alone. We never read wide. Hmm. We never read wide. We read only for profession. What do you mean by that, sir? What I mean by that, that I'm an accountant. It's only things that concern our uh, economics and accounting that I want to read about. Hmm. They should read every literature that comes their way. Hmm. Especially anthropology literatures that talk about where people are coming from. America has once had their problem. I remember that I read that in those days, even for you to have a personal Bible in your home, in Europe, it's an essay. You'll be killed. Do you know that, oh, King James has his name today because he did what nobody thought anybody can do. Before, Bible is only written in Jewish language. It was King James that first pronounced that it must be translated to English language. The same King James? Yes. Before, if you translate it to English language, you'll be killed. They believe that they don't supposed to translate Bible. That's the old church. The old church. The old church of the era of the Portiers. Before Martin Luther even came in Germany and started telling us about Reformation, yeah. about Protestantism. Before, before that. Before long, long before then. Some of them don't even know that the Moors who are black, they've ruled Spain to up to, up to Scotland before. Hmm. They don't know. The only real relation of the, like I told somebody I wrote somebody for somebody you know, I wrote something for somebody on you know, Facebook I replied somebody's position on Facebook when he was saying some things about people that go to Oshobo to rally for Yoruba nation that they are doing wrong thing I now told him I've been reading all that you've been posting on Facebook for long I want you to go and read wide research wide don't put yourself in the prism of the new new day writers. Go and research what has been happening 1,000 years ago, 700 years ago, 500 years ago, 300 years ago, 200 years ago. That is when you will know the involvement, how we'll be evolving till we get to this IT age. Science of evolution. Yes. Hmm. So you see, you see, I'm so happy that we are meeting a historian, not just a technocrat, you know, but let's even look at the perspective of history. And let's come back to what is going on in society today. 
do you think the agitators are right? Because you look at Chief Sunday Bo now, you look at people like her. In fact, Sunday Bo really defined the whole thing. Before we were having people like one uh, Chief Gary Adams that we are looking up to, that is a is a is a Ariano Kankan fool. We look at one Wasua in day that they call him is it the uh, Baba Gua or uh, 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 or something like that. But look at what Chief Bo is doing now. If you are to analyze, though a lot of people say it's an illiterate, but if you analyze him, will you say that what he's doing is wrong or right and why?